Ever wondered if using expensive oils in your soap making really makes a difference to the final product? Then stick around, because today we're going to be comparing cheap versus steep. Hey everyone and welcome back to our channel. My name's Anne and along with my good friend Wayne, we run the Sussex Handmade Soap Company, which is a small bath and body business based in the southeast of the UK. And we also run this YouTube channel. And today we're going to be having a little bit of fun and doing a little experiment. We are going to be making soap using the cheapest soap making oils that we could find. And we are also going to be making soap using the steepest soap making oils that we could find. If you are not in the UK and you're not sure what I mean by steep, it's another word for expensive. I'm using it today because it rhymes with cheap and that's just fun. So cheap oils, steep oils. So obviously at the moment there is a cost of living crisis going on pretty much everywhere. So when it comes to making soap and choosing oils and things, price is often at the forefront of a lot of people's minds because you don't want to be spending too much creating your product because then you'll need to sell it at a higher price and people have got less money to buy it, etc, etc, etc. So we thought it'd be quite a fun little experiment to try and make a bar of soap as cheaply as we possibly could using the cheapest oils that we could find and then actually comparing it to a bar that we make with the most expensive oils that we could find. Um, and we're just going to kind of be assessing how it feels on the skin, how bubbly it is, how clean we feel, whether it strips our skin of any oils. And we just thought it'd be a nice little experiment to compare the two and see how much of a difference to just an average bar of soap using much more expensive oils can make as opposed to using cheaper oils. So I'm going to talk you through our recipes today. I'm going to talk you through what oils we're using and I am going to be focusing on cost price as well and that is cost price per gram. I'm going to be breaking it down and telling you gram for gram how much each of these oils costs and I'm also going to be telling you how much the actual soap bars cost us to make. Now with oils there are a lot of price variations depending on whether you buy in small quantities or whether you buy in bigger bulk quantities. So I'm going to take our pricing one step further and I've done the cost per bar if you are buying in small quantities and I've done the cost per bar if you are buying in bulk quantities and there is a large difference in the actual cost price per bar depending on whether you do buy in bulk or smaller quantities. So I'm going to start talking you through the ingredients and the cost prices now and you will see that they are really rather different. So I'm going to start by talking through our cheap recipe and I'm popping it up here for you as well so you can have a look at what is going into it. It is predominantly a lard based soap. We have got 45% lard so it is our main oil. We have also got some coconut oil, some castor oil, some rapeseed oil which I believe in the US you refer to as canola oil and to scent it we have got a standard lavender essential oil. Nothing special, just a standard cheap lavender. The only ingredient that remains the same in the cheap recipe and the steep recipe is the castor oil and that is because castor oil is kind of a unique oil and it is difficult to find another oil similar enough to castor to kind of give the soap the same quality. So the castor remains the same in the cheap and the steep recipe, everything else is different. Getting on to costings, if you were to buy small quantities of these oils, so pretty much just enough to make yourself a loaf or two of soap, then you would be looking at a cost of coconut oil 2.58 pence per gram, lard 0 0.17 pence per gram, so that is super cheap, the rapeseed was 0 0.38 pence per gram, the castor oil was 6.24 pence per gram and the lavender essential oil was 15.89 pence per gram. If, however, you bought in higher quantities and by higher quantities, uh, for the standard oils, I'm referring to kind of like five kilos or more. For the essential oil, I'm talking about one kilogram or more. That really brings the price down even further. So for bulk purchases, the cost of the coconut oil drops to 0 0.3 pence per gram. The lard remains the same because I bought it from the supermarket. 
Same for the rapeseed, that is remaining the same. The castor oil drops massively in price. It has dropped to 0 0.6 pence per gram from 6.2 pence per gram. So it's gone down massively. And the lavender essential oil has also come down to 5.68 pence per gram as opposed to 15.89. So you can see that on a price per gram basis, buying in bulk really does give you much cheaper prices for your base oils. Now I'm gonna switch sides and I'm gonna move on to our expensive ingredients. So we have a lot more ingredients in our expensive soap. Um, I've tried to include luxury ingredients. So we are using Monoi de Tahiti oil. That is essentially coconut oil, but it has been infused with gardenia flowers. It smells absolutely gorgeous, but that smell will not carry through into the final soap. It's used a lot in hair care and it's a really lovely ingredient. Um, but again, not sure how well those properties will transfer into the final soap. We have then got, and I may pronounce some of these wrong because I've learned them from reading them. I haven't really heard these words pronounced. So if I apologise, if I apologise, if I pronounce them incorrectly, then I apologise. We have got Muru Muru Butter, which is one of these. This one here. We have got, I like butter. We have got Cocum Butter. We have got Apricot Kernel Oil, Avocado Oil, Rosehip oil, which is super expensive and it really does feel like a bit of a waste putting it in soap. Rosehip oil is fantastic. It is used in a lot of skincare and creams. It's got so many different properties, you know, anti-wrinkle, anti-inflammatory, helps with acne, great for sensitive skin, great for oily skin. It is a very widely used oil in skincare because it has got so many fantastic properties but we're making a soap so those properties are probably not going to carry through into the final bar so feels a little bit like a waste but you know the final soap might be the best soap I've ever used in which case not a waste we're going to see it's an experiment <laughs> we have then got again the castor oil and we have got some lavender essential oil but this time it is lavender French high altitude. This was the most expensive lavender essential oil that I could find. Um, really expensive and it was marketed as being really good, really therapeutic, loads of benefits, helps with sleep but again we're making a soap. Those properties probably won't carry through so we're only going to be judging it on the smell and actually this one I have smelled, it smells amazing. It smells nicer than this one. There's not a massive difference, but this one just smells like a typical field of lavender in the summer and it smells really nice. And Wayne's opinion was it smells less like hay than this lavender here. So yeah, this one's less hay apparently. So those are the ingredients for our steep soap. And in terms of pricing, this is where you're really going to see the difference. For the small quantities, so the kind of quantities you can see that I've actually got here in front of me, the pricing is as follows. For the Monite Tahiti oil, you are looking at 6.04 pence per gram. The Muru Muru butter is 7.94 pence per gram. The Kokum, 4.23 pence per gram. I like 6.95 pence per gram. I'm going to stop saying pence per gram now because, you know, it's all pence per gram. The apricot kernel oil, 3.04 pence. The avocado oil, 5.53 pence. The rosehip oil, wait for this, 11.16 pence. The castor oil, again the same, 6.24. The lavender essential oil, French, high altitude, 40.8 pence per gram. That is crazy. I couldn't afford to use this in a lavender soap kind of on a long-term basis, purely for our experiment. If you do buy in bulk quantities, it does bring the prices down. So Mono de Tahiti, bulk purchases, 1.98 pence. Muru Muru is 3.4 pence. The Kokum comes down to 2.3 pence. The I like 2.5 pence, the apricot kernel oil 0.83 pence, the avocado oil 0.72 pence, the rosehip oil 5.25 pence, the castor oil 0.6 pence and the lavender essential oil French high altitude comes down to 
17.5 pence per gram, which compared to the bog standard cheap lavender essential oil is uh, a difference of about 12 pence per gram. This one was 5.68 pence per gram. This one, 17.5 pence per gram. So still a massive difference in those essential oil costs. Now the actual price per bar worked out too for the cheap, if you are buying small quantities, the pence, the pr sorry, the price per bar worked out to £1.45, which is still quite high, but that is because we are buying very small quantities. If you were to purchase in the bulk quantities, then the price per bar comes down to 45 pence. And I don't think that is bad at all for a lavender scented basic soap. 45 pence, pretty good. The steep bars, on the other hand, cost us for small purchase quantities, so the small little quantities you can see here today, each bar, cost price, unpackaged, comes in at £6.57 for one bar of soap. That is more than we actually sell our bars of soap at when we are at our shows, and that is just the cost price, so that is huge. If you buy the bulk ingredients, the price does come down quite substantially, it comes down to a cost price to make of £2.49 per bar. Still really, really high. So 45 pence per bar versus £2.49 per bar. So over £2, more expensive to make these expensive bars today than it is to make the cheap bars. So they're really going to have to perform well if they're going to be worth doing and if we're going to rate them as better than the cheap because... Cheap at the moment is coming out massively on top. So what I'm going to do now, and now I have explained all of our costings and talked you through everything, we're going to weigh out the ingredients, we're going to get to the soap making, we're going to make up two loaves of lavender soap. So we have weighed out our ingredients now, and I just wanted to show you what they are looking like. The only reason for the different size pan is we didn't have two pans the same size, so that's not crucial, that's just a pan issue. <laughs> Um, not wearing gloves or goggles yet because we haven't even moved on to touching the light at all. We've purely worked with the oils. So here we have the steep oils. And you can see we've got a load of different ones in there. Um, I had to melt the monoi oil because I couldn't get it out of the uh, little bottle otherwise. So I melted that just by popping it into some hot water, the bottle in a cup of hot water, melted that and then I managed to get it out. And this is the liquid oils, and look at the colour of them. That is just the most stunning red colour, and that has come from the rosehip oil that we added. I very much doubt that colour will follow through into the final soap bar, but you never know. I seriously doubt it, though. And here we have the cheap oils, which look very different in comparison. We have just got, basically, a lump of lard with some coconut oil. Not the most attractive sounding description, but that is what it is. And our liquid oils for our cheap are just looking the standard kind of golden yellow colour that you normally get with your soap making oils. What I'm going to do now is take both of these pans over to the hob and I'm going to melt them down slowly. And we're going to prepare our lye water as well. I'm not going to show you us preparing our lye water today. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, today the video is more about the comparison between the cheap oils and the steep oils. It's not so much a soap making video. So while we are going to show you us making the soap, we're going to go through it a little bit quicker than we often do. So we're going to jump straight to everything being ready to kind of get into the actual whizzing up making soap stage. So we are working on our cheap soap first. The oils are now melted. They did go, give off a bit of a smell. Um, kind of bacony, but not in a good way. I love a bacon sandwich, but it wasn't bacony in a good way. It was not horrible, but not pleasant either. We are now going to add in our liquid oils down into our solid oils. And I've never made light, um, never made lard soap before purely because it's not 
so much something that a lot of our customer base are after. We do have a lot of people that like the vegan, vegetarian stuff, which obviously lard is not. Um, and also with using lard, you're also excluding certain religious groups. So there are less people out there to buy your soap. But because today was more about cost and it's cheap, that is why we are using it today. I'm now going to quickly take the temperature of the oils and I'm going to go for around about 115 Fahrenheit today. Well, this is 109. The lye water was 115 when I measured it, but it will have dropped a little bit now, so I'm sure we are good to go. Oh, 109, perfect. So we're going to go in with our lye water down into our oils now. Carefully pouring that lye water into the oils and then we're going to use our stick blender and bring it to a light trace. So now we're at a nice light trace and this one did actually take longer to come to trace than our regular soap recipe does. You'll find that sometimes depending on which oils you use, some soaps will come to trace nice and quickly and some will take that little bit longer. This one did take a little longer, but we're now going to go in with our lavender essential oil. So popping that into the pot and then we're just going to work this in and then bring in the mould and pour. So now just pouring down into the mould. I'm not sure this is actually going to fill our mould completely because I made it slightly less in volume than our regular soap recipe, which does completely fill those moulds. But I'm not too fussed if it doesn't get right to the top, to be honest. I am going to texture the top purely as a point of difference between this and the steep recipe because I know what I'm like and I'm a bit concerned that if I don't make something about these soaps different after they've cured I'm going to forget which is which so I'm going to make the point of difference in the terms of how it is decorated on top so we're allowing it to firm up for a little bit now then we'll come back and we shall texture the top a little so the soap is starting to slowly set up. It is quite a slow moving one, so it's still relatively fluid, but I'm gonna be able to do a little texture on the top. And today's texture really isn't about necessarily being so pretty. It is more to enable me to tell which soap is which after they've been cut and cured. So for this one, I am just pulling up and away to one side. So there is a very, very basic <laughs> swirl in our cheap soap design. Now we're going to move on to steep. So we've now melted down all of our steep oils and we are going to add in the liquid oils now. And then as before, we're just going to mix them to combine. And both of our oils and our lye water are sitting around about 109 degrees Fahrenheit. And whereas our cheap soap gave off that kind of baconish scent, this one is also giving us off a scent that I'm not familiar with, but it is a beautiful floral scent. And it's from that Monoi oil. I can really smell the gardenia flowers in this. So this is a very nicely scented oil, unlike the cheap soap, which definitely wasn't quite so pleasant. So we're going to go in with our lye water now and then we're going to use the blender to bring it to again a light to medium kind of trace. And this one has come to trace a lot quicker and it has come to quite a thick trace as well. I imagine that could possibly be the gardenia in the monoi oil because floral essential oils can cause quicker trace. So it's quite possibly those gardenia flowers in that monoi. So I popped in our high altitude French lavender. And I'm just gonna whiz it round and get it incorporated. And then we're gonna get this into the mold. And it's a gorgeous kind of yellowy color at the moment. And again, that is from the rose hip. Definitely a lot, lot thicker. 
might even be one of those soaps that we have to end up kind of spooning into the mold so I am just gonna do my best to plap it all out into our mold yeah very thick I was not expecting this and I would as I say bet money on it being the gardenia flowers in that monoi oil <laughs> look at that right let's squidge it in shall we Good job we're not trying to do anything intricate with this one, like swirling. Right, let's get it squidged down into the mould. Well, I think we can safely say that the uh, steep lavender is not going to look quite as attractive as the cheap lavender. But we're not going for looks. We're not fussy about looks today. We're going for actual action and performance <laughs> so there we go there is our steep soap done i'm not even going to attempt to swirl the top because it's going to look very different to our cheap soap anyway they're going to be very easy to tell apart um, and i think if i attempt to swirl this it's just going to look like a mess so we're going to stick with it like that and we're going to leave both this and our cheap soap overnight, 24 hours to kind of set up. Then we're going to come back, chop them up, and we're going to actually firstly assess any immediately obvious differences. Then we're going to leave them to cure, and then we will come back and do probably another video where we actually show you the finished soaps after they've cured. So back in 24 hours for the cuts. So we are back 24 hours later, and we have unmoulded our cheap and steep soaps. And just look at our steep soap. It is really unattractive. Obviously yesterday we had those issues with it thickening so quickly it was tough to get it into the mould and we didn't manage to get it into the mould properly and it's ended up looking really lumpy, really bumpy and not at all attractive. But like I said yesterday, it's not about looks today, it's about performance. So although it looks ugly, it might perform brilliantly. So we've just got to cross our fingers on that. Yesterday, I did say I thought the reason it thickened so quickly could have been down to the gardenia flowers in the monoi oil. Having had a little bit more of a think about it, I'm wondering if it was potentially the rosehip oil as well that may have caused it to thicken so quickly, because I know rose geranium and rose essential oils do cause the soap butter to thicken a lot and thicken quickly. So potentially it could even have been the rosehip oil that caused that to thicken so quickly as it did. Anyway, we're gonna chop them up now and we're gonna see if we can find the most attractive bar from this one. Um, I've got a laugh though, it's like the most expensive soap ever and it looks like a complete mess, but you've got a laugh, haven't you? We're gonna chop these up now. We'll start by chopping up the cheap one. So cutting down through our cheap loaf. And that is one bar of our cheap soap there. It was fairly firm to cut, seems to have cut quite nicely and looking good. So we'll pop it to the side and we'll move on to chopping up the steep loaf now. <laughs> so trying to line this one up and then cutting down through it. And again, this one is firm to cut. Oh, that's really firm, much firmer than the cheap loaf. There we go. And actually, I've got to say, once it is cut and you look at it on the inside, it doesn't look quite as ugly as it did. Obviously, the sides are still a little bit dodgy, but the actual bar doesn't look too bad. So not quite as bad as I was thinking it might have been. Let's compare the two now. So visually, the cheap one does look more attractive. There is no denying that. However, we have got a very pretty yellow colour in the steep bar, and that is quite nice. I like the colour. The colour is something I do like about the steep bar. Um, there's not a whole amount of difference in the actual consistency. They are both firm bars of soap at the moment. This one is less firm and was easier to cut. This one was pretty tough to cut actually. I was a bit worried about whether we were actually going to get the soap cutter through it, but we did. Now we're going to have a little bit of a sniff test and they've only just been cut so this won't be entirely reliable, but we go off first reactions. So, cheap. 
Yep. Well, it's lost that bacony smell, I'm very pleased to report. And there is just a light hint of lavender in there. It smells like a lavender soap, so nothing particularly special to say about that. Standard lavender soap. Let's smell this one. Now, actually, if I'm being really critical, I think I can smell the lavender less in this one. I think the lavender scent is coming through less, which is surprising. I thought they were going to smell pretty much the same, to be honest. I thought that high altitude lavender was going to make no difference to the scent. But actually, it's definitely coming through slightly less in this one, which is surprising. Um, and for the amount of money we spent, we would want this one to smell absolutely amazing compared to this one. And it's actually the other, other way around. I'm actually preferring the lavender we've used in this one here. So that's where we're going to leave the video for today. We will do a follow-up video once the soaps have cured to actually show how they perform in water and how they bubble and to give our proper analysis of which one we think actually performs better. I will link it when it has been done to this video. I'll pop it up in one of the corners and I'll put it in the description as well. Um, but that won't be for a few weeks unless of course you're watching in the future in which case it may have already been done and will be happily sitting in the description box for you to click on and see how they did turn out once they were cured. If you enjoy videos like this and do remember to hit subscribe, give us a like and leave us a comment as well and we will see you for our next video sometime soon. Bye for now.